Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day at Smart Queens. I'm in the small village of Ban Na Thon, which is in Nakompanom in the Isan northeastern region of Thailand, and we're right along the Mekong River. The people are nice, the food is delicious. <laughs> and today is gonna be a huge food day. Uh, some of the community from the village is gonna come together. They're gonna cook for us some of the local dishes of this village and of this area. And so in this video, I can't wait to share everything that we do and all of the food with you. Never too early for fermented fish sauce. arrived in the village last night and some of the community had gathered to give us an amazing welcome, such a special welcome, uh, and to show their hospitality in this village. And that's why I have these uh, white strings wrapped around my wrist. <laughs> ให้สุขภาพแข็งแรงมั่งมีสีสุขเจริญเจริญทําสิ่งใดก็ให้สมคิดสมปรารถนาอายุมั่นขวัญยืนให้คุณพระพุทธพระธรรมพระสงฆ
wow. That is juicy. And it's so herb driven. Galango, half your lime leaves. Yeah, the juiciness of that fish. A little bit of chili in there. Maybe tomatoes are giving it juiciness as well. Oh, that's just straight delicious. Another dip is a jeopala. It's a fermented fish, fiery chili, lots of herbs in there too. Green onions maybe? A uh, dip that you can dip in sticky rice that you can uh, also especially made for grilled chicken. Mm. Oh man, the pungency, the fermented fish, the green onions, the dried chilies in there. Such a powerful flavor. Never too early for fermented fish sauce. Top notch breakfast, and we are immediately heading to start doing some activities. Gonna go around uh, on the motorbike sidecar, and we're gonna see some things and maybe gather some ingredients. I'm not totally sure yet uh, before we come back to cook for lunch. Oh, we've all got hats. Oh, thank you. Kapu makap. Yes. I got a hat for the day. <laughs> we are officially ready to start the day. People here are friendly, so relaxed, and the, the slow pace of life is something that you're gonna love here. This uh, village is known for their forging of knives. That's one of their main industries along with agriculture. Um, so we're gonna stop by a property here where they're making the knives first. Oh man, I can feel the heat radiating on my face from that, that glow-in-the-dark hot uh, iron. And also my ears almost ringing because of that hammer pounding. Um, and even the ground shakes a little bit. But that is just a skill. He's an artist. He's an expert. Uncle is 84 years old, uh, and we asked him how long he's been making these handmade knives. He said since he, he cannot remember, uh, but since he was a kid. So possibly 75 years of knife making experience. And so the actual pieces of metal, what the knives are made from, are actually truck leaf springs. That perfect piece of steel, that perfect piece of metal, uh, which then is flattened and hammered out into a knife shape. And it's all just from one piece because even the handle is just uh, that same piece of metal which is curled up and then the, the knife part, the sharp part, is flattened, is pounded into a, a perfect knife shape. Perfect especially for chopping and mincing up meat dishes like lab in Isan. Uh, he's gonna show us really quickly a demonstration of how you know that it's the best quality handmade knife. And they said if it's a, not a well-made knife, the knife will actually break. And that is a ready, that is a complete handmade knife. Thank you to Uncle for showing us this just amazing art. Okay, kapun makab. Kapun makab, unkab. Kapun makab. That was cool. So cool. We are heading to the garden now to pick up some vegetables. Whoa. It is 
windy, but such a cool place. We have arrived to the banks of the Mekong River and the soil here is so fertile and right in season right now is called Pak Kwang Tung, uh, which I think, is it uh, Choi Sum? I think it might be Choi Sum, uh, the vegetable, but that is a beautiful sight. The little yellow flowers and just uh, that is healthy, that's green, that is beautiful. You can come here and actually buy straight from the farm. Uh, and here's where they're packing it, distributing it. So what do you This is a picture perfect, beautiful, Mekong, healthy vegetable farm on the banks of the river. It is spectacular. And you can, it's so fresh, it's so green, you can actually smell the aroma of that vegetable. So you pick it kind of from the center of the stem and it just, oh, it just snaps off. Oh man. Oh yeah, it smells so good. So unbelievably fresh, so unbelievably green. Okay, another thing that they have here in a smaller amount, which is like Chinese broccoli, I believe. And then they also have coriander and dill growing as well, which she's picking up now. Next up, and it's not too far away from the village and where we were along the river, uh, we're stopping by one of the Naga Temple. It's a pilgrimage site in Isan. It's a pilgrimage site throughout Thailand. And so we're just gonna stop at this temple and the magnificent uh, stupa just for a little while. And you can see on all four corners of the stupa surrounding the temple, there are these massive golden, kind of dragon, almost serpent. I think that is the Naga. Um, and five heads, completely gold and studded with jewels. Back at the house now, the aunties are gonna get started cooking. They're gonna cook two meals. One is for lunch and for dinner. So I'm not totally sure which ingredients are for which, but we're gonna try to just follow them and see the dishes, see some of the cooking, uh, some of the dishes that they're gonna make for, for lunch and dinner tonight. And as they're beginning to cook, she's bringing out a fresh batch of kanom tian. It's a local snack, uh, and it's so friggin' from that banana leaf. Mmm. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh. It almost tastes like curry on the inside. But sweet, a little bit sweet, a little bit peppery. Oh, that's what it is. So I picked Thai Dom. Oh, my God. It's the pepper in there. Yes, I've had this before. Oh, my God. Oh, that's great. Okay, okay. Okay. One of the interesting dishes that I'm very excited to try is called Jiao Nang Kem. Buffalo skin uh, pounded into a, a paste. Uh, a chili dip. <laughs> that is natural. What an ingredient. Okay, That's gonna boil 
and then she adds in a little bit of bala fermented fish sauce into that water to boil it. Another dish they're making is a boiled chicken. And so he's chopping up the chicken and then also that's gonna go into there is uh, green fresh tamarind uh, plus galangal that uh, grandma actually got from her garden right below the house earlier. Uh, and also lemongrass is going in. Oh, and also tamarind leaves, young tamarind leaves. Another dish that they're going to be serving for lunch today is something called luet blang and it is the Isan version of raw pig's blood jelly soup. Oh man, a little a little raw pig's blood. That's a an unexpected dish. I haven't had it very often, but I have had similar variations of this dish one time in Laos and also in northern Thailand. Here she comes with the fresh sticky rice. There are few things that give off a greater aroma. The same kind of pleasing aroma as you get from freshly baked bread. It's one of the biggest parts of Isan and Lao culinary culture. Uh, and then you have hot, fresh, sticky rice that you can eat throughout the day. Bon kop. Okay, yet another dish that they're gonna make is called bon kop which is a frog chili dip. So she's just skewering uh, the frogs. They're gonna roast first and then they're gonna make that into another chili dip. Oh man, we're getting some special dishes today for lunch. I think all the ingredients are ready for the buffalo skin chili dip. Uh, what she did is she also charred off some uh, a variety of different peppers, uh, chili peppers, and some garlic and shallots. That's such a satisfying squishy sound.
Okay. That is gonna be a thick and chunky buffalo skin chili dip. An update on the roasted frog chili dip. Uh, they're coming along nicely, so she said they're ready, they are cooked, but uh, in the meantime, she added on some slices of galangal, which are also roasting over the fire, and that's gonna go into the dip too. Oh, that smells amazing. And that's all gonna go in, that's all gonna be pounded up into the chili dip, the frog chili dip. And next up, what an ingredient. Uh, those are ginger leaves. Ginger leaves, and now she's chopping up some coriander and some green onions. Oh, ginger leaves. What an addition to this roasted frog chili dip. Final step is bala fermented fish sauce and a squeeze of lime finished ready. That smells unbelievable. What a recipe, what a dish. The amount of ingredients in there. sitting down for a family lunch. Everything is ready. The different dips, the chili dips are what's really standing out to me. And this is just as local as possible. Fresh sticky rice. The first thing that I have to taste is the, the frog dip. Get some sticky rice. This one is the, the joko. Bonko, bonko. Bonko. Oh, and yeah, that addition of the, the ginger leaves. That's what I am thrilled about. Oh wow, that's stunning. Unbelievable flavor mm -hmm. and texture. You've got the like gingery earthiness yeah. of both the ginger leaves and the galangal. The, um, the frog in there is so fragrant and roasted and almost has a chicken, a shredded chicken taste to it. Oh, and she added in just a, a couple spoons of pala, fermented fish sauce, just to bring it together, to bring it home, to well round that flavor. It's stunning. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's a perfect combination because it's kind of bitter. Another contrast of flavor and texture. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, very good. Mm. <laughs> it has fully coagulated now into a blood jelly with all those organs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, that is tasty. Oh man, all the different bits of the organs, the cartilage is in there, so many textures. It's mostly coagulated blood that just kind of dissolves and melts in your mouth. And then these are all the different herbs, basils, and uh, sati with coriander that you chase with. But yeah, I mean, that's one of those dishes that it's not the, the safest thing to eat, bacteria-wise. It does taste pretty good though. I have to admit, it tastes pretty good. Next up for the buffalo chili dip, buffalo skin chili dip. That is mm -hmm. chunky. Mm. It almost has a cheesy taste to it. I think from the fermented fish sauce, the bala. Oh, and that skin. Yeah, that is like jelly 
and slightly has a like cartilage crunch to it at the same time. You can tell that it's it's like boiled leather. That's pretty tasty. I think this is the final dish that we have. Me, it's me, the me. oh okay. Okay, me you have. This is the the boiled chicken soup uh, with all the different herbs. Oh, with the green tamarind and the tamarind um, the green tamarind and the tamarind leaves in here. You just taste that broth, and they added in some kaffir lime leaves too. Wow. Wow. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, the green tamarind. I got a green tamarind seed in that, but the sourness is coming from the tamarind, and then that's just a simple boiled chicken soup flavor. And then you've got all those local Thai herbs, especially lemongrass, galangal in there, which is creating that broth, um, giving it that amazing kind of citrusy, aromatic aroma to it. Oh man, that buffalo chili dip is amazingly rubbery, yet soft at the same time. And some of the fresh dill that we harvested this morning as well. Mm. Oh wow. One of my favorite herbs, I love dill. In every shape and form. And that's straight from the banks of the Mekong. But I think the best dish, bon go. That frog chili dip. Oh, wow, that one, <laughs> that's the best. And I just love how there's such an abundance of vegetables and herbs. Yeah such a major part of the local diet. Oh man, what an incredible lunch. That just set the standard for frog dishes. That's a new level of frog in my life. What a spectacular meal. Thank you to all of the aunties who prepared it. Where's my hat? Next up, we've come to the riverside, and this is not the Mekong River, but it's a river that that flows into the Mekong, and we're just maybe a kilometer away from the Mekong. I didn't even know this, but we're gonna take a little fishing trip. We're gonna go out on a boat and try to catch a few fish, if we can. So these are just floating rafts, um, and it's kind of a leisure activity. You, I think we're gonna float out on these floating rafts and go fishing, but they're big, they're stable, almost like a houseboat. It's pretty cool. He has a boat with a motor on it, and so he's just attaching to us, to our raft, and he has an engine, so he's gonna be able to push our raft along. Now that makes sense. And we are off, we're on our way. Just like all of Nakompanom, ultimate. Everything is taken to the next level of relaxation. So at first I thought we were gonna go fishing, but actually we're not gonna go fishing. We are just completely relaxing to the max. I think you could hire this boat just to take a nap on. made it back to the house and some aunties have gathered. They are preparing dinner, the dinner meal. Uh, again, some more unique, interesting ingredients, local ingredients. Uh, she's picking or plucking some flowers, which is gonna go into a lab with fish. And then there's so many different herbs. And we're definitely gonna be eating that Mekong fish that we already saw this morning. The fish, uh, there's gonna be a bamboo shoot curry with the yanang leaves and few other dishes, I believe. Oh, 
Gang no mai, like a koi hit. Oh man, that bamboo shoot curry smells amazing. The final step is she adds in that handful of herbs, uh, which was kind of a jumbled mix of herbs, but immediately as that, that hits the curry boiling soup, I smelled the aroma of lemon basil. So definitely some lemon basil in there. It looks like almost some flat leaf parsley and maybe some coriander. Oh, that's what a dish. Ah. With that uh, Mekong river fish, which they then chopped up, they're gonna make a tom yum uh, with galangal. She just put galangal and lemongrass into some hot water. Okay. So that's for the la bla, the fish salad for this evening. She really sliced up the fillets of tilapia fish and then squeezed in some lime and salt and then like squeezing out the juices. I think you want kind of like the, the to make maybe the, the fish meat firmer. Um, and then they're gonna just lightly cook it and then mix it with all the herbs, the spices, the kakua, the roasted, toasted, sticky rice powder, and chili, uh, and lime juice. Oh man, that's gonna be so good. <laughs> Oh man, now that is a genius move. So she took the slices of fish and just lightly blanches them in the broth, but in the broth of the tom yum that she's making with the other fish. And I think now all the ingredients are ready for the lab. Huh? <laughs> 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 ใช่ปลาเอ่อปลาแดกปลาแดกปลาแดกนี่เป็นปลาแดกใช่มั้ยครับปลาแดกปลาแดกอืมครับเซฟปลาแดกอันนี้เอาเอาสักติ๊บจ
Yeah, the fish is so soft, it just melts in your mouth and it's absorbed all of those herbs. The kaffir lime leaves in there. The galangal. Oh man, and you taste that fish fat coming out from all that skin. Chase that with some of the herbs, some of the dill. I can't get enough of the dill. <laughs> and next up, this is the bamboo curry or bamboo stew with lots of mushrooms in here. There's corn in here, and the base of the broth is made from yanang leaves. Mm. The sweetness of all of those vegetables, the bamboo shoot, and that sweet corn. And then you've got the texture, the elasticity of those mushrooms, um, and then just the green flavor. So many herbs plants coming together in that dish. Two flower combination, one, again, that's the yellow flower that my first time to try, and she put it also in the lab, and then also the butterfly pea flower. Mm. I love like the velvety texture of flowers. Whoa, that almost has a spicy kind of chalky taste to it. I didn't know what to expect today when we started off, but it turned into an ultimate day of Thai Isan Nakonpanom Ban Tanon village food, an ultimate day. Uh, but just also demonstrating the diversity and the possibility and the different varied dishes that are available in this region of Isan. This is just a beautiful, peaceful, friendly village. And so I wanna say a big thank you to everyone who organized uh, our time here, to all of the aunties who helped cook, to the head of the village. And so that's gonna be it for this video. I'll have the information in the description box below. And I wanna say a big thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe and also click the little bell icon. And that way you'll immediately get notified of the next video that I publish. Thanks again. Goodbye from Nakompanom and see you on the next video.